Hey everybody, it's Nintokis back again with another time lapse drawing, and today we've got Proto Man from the Mega Man series for Twitch user Protonymous X. Uh, I call him Proto. He's in another Discord I'm in, the video shorts guys. Um, I actually did an entire other draft of this. Uh, I might actually splice it in because it's hidden in the layers right there. Ah, uh, there it is. I did that, and I'm circling what was not working. I did a whole bunch of clean lines and then realized his whole shoulder was just completely messed up. And like on stream, I was like almost devastated. I spent probably like a half hour on it. I'm like, mm. but it goes back to what I say a lot. I mean, no part of any drawing is sacred. Sometimes you just got to know when to fold and be like, all right, I got to start this over again. But uh, I didn't want to go with this thumbnail initially because I felt it was a little bit too flat. But the end product, I think, makes up for it. I did a lot of uh, fancy little rendering bits on the metal which isn't present in a lot of his art, and I feel like that's a little bit of a missed opportunity, but I'm not over here crapping on actual professional art. <laughs> I've got no leg to stand on there. Um, ironically, I don't have a very large history with the Mega Man series, which is kind of sad. I mean, I know a lot of people online, they like to crap on people for not playing these famous series, but gaming has been around for such a long time now, it's almost like when you ask someone if they're watching the latest show on, like, Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or <laughs> CBS, <laughs> could you imagine? But, uh, no, it's, there's so many games out there, and I didn't have the, uh, what do you even call it, a benefit of growing up at the time these games were huge. They did have a little bit of a, uh, a resurgence, like, excluding the, uh, X spinoffs and the Battle Network series. I didn't own a Game Boy Advance. I had, like, maybe 10 games on my OG PlayStation. But, um, the resurgence in, like, I think it was 2010, 2011, where they made Mega Man 10 and 9. And did they make 11? They might have. But they, those were on, like, WiiWare and Xbox Live Arcade and PSN. But, again, I, I just sort of passed on those, too. And, hell, they even made a new one on Switch. I'm slacking, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> And it's just, it's doubly weird because the series is so prolific. Like, everywhere you look you see Mega Man. I mean, I play Smash a lot, and I recognize a lot of the music, and it's such a beloved series spawning bands like the Megas and the Proto Men, and I was, I was very tempted to use some of their music here, but I decided against it. Um, actually, as I'm getting into this, I do want to talk a lot about creating the blaster. I took a lot of artistic liberties on it, because the art style for Mega Man is very simple. As it were on the NES, you had these little 8-bit sprites you had to work with, and I think that the artist for the series, whose name escapes me at the moment, this is live, I've got no time to uh, look it up, but they did some great work in making these designs simple, so they translated very well to the sprites. And as the graphics got better for the consoles they were working with, you could see the character designs evolve as well, like they got a little bit more complex with the X series on the PlayStation, and I believe there was some ZX games on the GBA. I might have to eat my words later. I have no idea. But, um, yeah, no, I just... To make it better fit the style that I draw with, or my art style, rather, I took a few liberties, I tried to make things a little bit more metallic. You could see me adding little pieces and screws to hold them together to kind of make it look a little bit more mechanical, as there's not a lot of texture work done on the uh, OG art I was referencing here, which is kind of chilling in the background. I actually had a lot of trouble with his shield too. Like initially I had no idea what to do with it. And if you look through all the art, at least from the art pieces that I had found, there's really no justification to how he's holding it. At least not that I'd seen. I might have missed the piece that shows the back of the shield. I mean, I'm an amateur using Google image references, so there very well may be like this obscure piece in like the instruction manual to Mega Man 3 that has it, but uh, I was unable to find it personally. So I just kind of made this little strap that had like a hole in the middle. I, now looking at it now, I'm not a huge fan of how I did that. It was more about necessity and how his arm was placed rather than convenience or good design. But thankfully it's not like the centerpiece of the drawing. But these are things that I'm learning now in retrospect, where I'm looking at them and I'm like, I probably should have, and I did it with the blaster too you saw earlier, where before you really place something and hard commit to it, before you go too far, I should say, 
is you kind of sketch out like a small rough draft of something in like a couple different views just to see how it looks. And also this little thing right here, I think this was a design element I didn't go far enough with. I do play it at the end of the video, but when Proto Man shows up, I believe in Mega Man 3, he has like this little whistle, this iconic little whistle, and then he sweeps in and it's like, I believe the effect that they were going for on the NES is like a dust cloud kicks in and then Proto Man is just there. But of course there's only so much you can do with an original Nintendo, so like they have like a couple of leaves pop in and he like flies in with them. So that's what I was trying to emulate there. I really, I don't know how successful I was. I would like to say I'm a decent bit successful. I tried to put a little bit of depth in it by putting the one in front of his left leg and the one behind his right leg and having that large curve popping around, but I feel like I could have done a little bit more with it. And if I were to revisit this drawing, I would probably retool the camera, quote unquote, so to speak, to be a little bit more panned in front, like at his chest level of Proto Man. This way you could kind of see how far he's coming with those. Because right now it just kind of seems flat. And I mean, Mega Man games are 2D, but still. <laughs> and right here, I, I didn't want to go too far with the blaster. Like, I wanted some exhaust coming out of those little holes, because I feel like that's a design element that maybe even the original artist had in mind when he was doing those. Like, kind of like a little area to dust off steam. And even in uh, Mega Man's Smash moveset, when he does his down smash, his uh, blasters on both hands have that sort of ventilation at the very front of them to let off some steam. So, I wanted to do that, but I feel like putting it out of all like eight or however many of those uh, holes there, it'd be a little bit much, so I just took four sides. And now I start doing something that I'm perhaps most proud of with this drawing, is rendering out the metal bits of his armor, as I'd mentioned earlier, I believe. I don't know where I got this from, I've probably just seen it so many times and have subconsciously taken it, but it was a lot of experimentation, just kind of like figuring out how well it worked. I mean, a lot of my art style is primarily influenced by Western comics, mostly the line art, or even things like Mad World or uh, the video game and like Sin City, that type of art style, where everything is just like very chunky with the blacks and whites. Like, it's probably why I like crap on my colored work a lot, just because I don't color as often as I would really like to, and then when I do, there's a lot of complaints I have, which I've gotten better, I will say, and that's all thanks to uh, my Twitch subscribers kind of pushing me with challenging drawings for that or those who have given me colored commissions and giving me particularly challenging things to tackle there and I can't thank you guys enough for that that's uh that's pushing me out of my comfort zone and I live for that and to go on a tangent as an artist I think that's something that you need to do as a creator you need to escape your comfort zone just don't just keep drawing things that you draw just because you like to draw them like every once in a while you gotta step outside and be like alright I've never actually drawn this before let me try it. Let's just see how it'll go, because sometimes you'll surprise yourself. Like, I avoided a lot of different uh, physical mediums for so long, and when I started taking classes, I was forced to use uh, charcoal, I was forced to use gouache paints, and ink as well, and hated charcoal. Gouache paint went better than expected, but I actually adore, like, painting with ink. So, you know, you never know until you try it. And a lot of this is just kind of zooming out, seeing what could be rendered a little bit better. I've noticed I've started uh, doing a little bit of a... Uh, would you call it even hatching? It's not technically, but giving a little bit more value to the line art drawings that I've been doing for uh, my Twitch followers. And it's something a lot of people wouldn't recommend doing with an ink pen, I don't think. There it is. There's that whistle. I wanted to uh, introduce that as it was done. What this is doing now, though, is... Uh, I did splice this recording in a little bit, I believe, because I did one thing and then realized that I forgot to texture the shield, so there might be a small cut, unless I messed up the edit, but I might have messed up the edit. Well, you'll know in post. <laughs> I'll have to, like, inject myself back in, but, uh, yeah, this was the whistle theme from Mega Man 3 as the little pop-up came in. This is what, uh... Proto Man would always show up to, and that was again with going back to what I wanted to do with the little leaves there. But yeah, a lot of this is just extra little odds and ends. I did the helmet fairly late. I was actually going to leave the helmet as is, and I was like, no, it needs to match everything else. So you can see me jumping back into that and going there. And I definitely messed up the edit, so I may inject a little bit more commentary. 
Yeah, here we go. Future edit coming through. Um, also, I apologize for the audio. I don't know what's going on with my mic today, but it's clipping a lot, so I'm trying to like back away from it to cause it to not do that. But um, as you can see here, I actually just had to pop back in. I thought I was finished with this drawing, and it turns out I had no value on the shield. Like, whatsoever. There was just nothing. It was just white. And it stood out like a sore thumb. I couldn't just leave it like that. Especially because there was the red trim on the little, like, eye hole and the sides of it. I had to just jump back in and fix that. It wasn't sitting right with me. And I don't know if the battle damage was there before, but I do believe I added that here really quick. And you can see I'm being a little bit more, uh, delicate, I want to say, as to not rush, but also just get it done. And, you know, I don't want to focus too much on one small area, which is something I do often. And a lot of artists do. Like, we're all guilty of it. We'll get so involved with this one little tiny area. And then, all of a sudden, when we're done with it, we take a step back and it looks more detailed than the rest, or it looks out of place. And it's very difficult, at least for me personally, to jump back into the mindset of a drawing. When, after, like, after I feel like it's done, to just jump back in and make edits, it's quite difficult. Uh, it's, it's all a mindset thing, and I'm a person who works heavily with uh, momentum, where I just run with a feeling and just go with it. So, you know, I was just trying my best not to ruin this drawing with this little last minute change, but I do believe it was for the better. But that's okay, because this is the finished product right here. Thank you so much for the follow, Protonymous. And where would I be without my patrons, Diana, Tiana, Elena, and Draconic Overlord? If you guys want more information about that and early access to full resolution versions of all my drawings, you can hit the description right there. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. That's where all these drawings are coming from. And uh, stay tuned for more content. I hope you guys stick with me. And thank you so, so much for watching.